Hello, friends. This is Pastor Kurt Nice. I pastor Calvary Baptist Church in uh, in Richmond, Indiana. And I would, if you live right around Richmond, Indiana, I would invite you to come and worship with us. Our Sunday school starts at seven at nine thirty on Sunday morning, and morning worship is at ten thirty. Uh, and so we would in, invite you to come and worship with us. We have a, do have a Wednesday night Bible study. We meet in the fellowship hall, and we have coffee and and some dessert. But we uh, but we also center it around God's holy word. So today I want to like to like to preach a message on five reasons why we should not be weary in the journey. Uh, we all you know, we we get weary. I know that uh, we all get tired. Uh, but I believe that, you know, that we have some scriptural reasons why we should not be weary. And so let, let's look at that. In uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Listen to that. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Have you ever been tempted to give up? <laughs> I know I have, uh, but we, we cannot give up in following the Lord Jesus Christ. I talked to a person one time uh, who said that she had never, never thought of giving up until she read a book called Don't Give Up. It had the opposite effect on her than, what, than we were even, could even expect. Friends, there's our pastors, evangelists, Sunday school teachers all over the world who have grown weary in the work, possibly due to a lack of fruit, lack of willing workers to help them, lack of finances, possibly even a lack of vision. You know, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Perhaps you're feeling low in your, in your spirit today. And if you are, let me, let me try to encourage you today. Uh, number one reason, reason for not being weary is right here in, in the word of God because God said not to. God says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. I believe that, you know, I believe God's anointed that. God anointed Paul <clears throat> to write you know, Galatians this morning out of a simple respect and obedience to God, we should not grow weary in the journey. We should not drop out. We should not quit. We should not give up. We should not turn back in well-doing. This well-doing is doing well in every aspect <clears throat> of it. But especially in the work of the Lord, we should not quit. Remember the time where... where uh, Jesus talking to Simon Peter in, in Luke chapter 5. Jesus told Peter to pull out and you know, launch out into the deep and, and throw out your nets. And Peter said, yeah, we, we've toiled all night long and we've caught nothing yet at thy word. I love that. Yet at thy word, I will drop down the net. And you know what happened? There are so many fish that the net broke. And he had to call other people to come on and help him in Luke chapter 5. Just as Simon said, Lord, at thy word, I will, and, and did what Jesus said, even though he was tired and discouraged and, and weary in the work, possibly discouraged. Friends, that illustration tells me that we are to keep on doing it. Don't give up. Don't give up now. We need to obey as well the word of God when it says, let us not grow weary in the journey. Friends, the journey is long, the journey is hard, but let us not grow weary in the journey. Then the second reason is out of appreciation for what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and for me. Friends, go back to the cross and remember what Jesus went through for you see remember the cross go back to the cross and remember what jesus went through think about his back being whipped with with the with the whip of you know 39 lashes think of the thorns upon his head 
the nails in his hands and his feet. Think about all that he had to, that he left to come down to earth. Think about the majesty of heaven and the glories of heaven. And yet he came down to earth all because, why? Because he loves you and he loves me. Hallelujah. Think about all that. Think about what he has done for you. Think about his home in heaven and think about the home in heaven that's waiting for you and I. Out of appreciation for him and all that he has done, friends, we can continue on. Just out of appreciation. One preacher says that after thinking about all of that, how can I say, Lord, I'm having a bad day. Think what Jesus went through on the cross for you and I. And out of appreciation for that, we, we can continue on. Number three, because the work of God is so important. The work of God is not a temporal, temporary thing. It's an eternal thing. And friends, if we don't do it, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? And if it's not now, when? There are souls in danger this morning or this evening, this, this afternoon. Whenever the time you're, you're, you're seeing this, there's, there's you know, people dying and going to an eternal hell. The work of God is so important. With, we must not get weary. The work of God is not temporal. It's, it's, life and, it's a life and death matter. It has eternal ramifications. The ministry to boys and girls, to children, is, is a life and death issue. The you know, work with teenagers and youth is a life and death issue. The ministry with middle age and senior citizens is a life and death issue. All the different outreaches that the churches have today, that's a life and death issue. And we must not give up because the work of God is so important. We cannot give up. We should not give up. The statistics are that there are almost more churches today closing than, than new ones are coming up. The statistics about pastors, evangelists, Sunday school teachers that are discouraged and giving up. Friends, we cannot give up. The work of God is so important. We must not give up. Souls are in danger and they're waiting for us. Hallelujah. Pastors. Hebrews 6.10 is a beautiful verse of scripture. It says God is not uh, unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love that you have showed toward his name. That's a beautiful work a verse. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love that you have showed to, to his name. Friends, I believe that God still blesses the people who will work in his harvest field, no matter what. I believe God will bless that kind of person. Number four, we should not grow weary because it will work. Look at what the Bible says. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I know I may be simple in my preaching. I know I may be simple in my beliefs, but I believe it's going to work if we work it. Amen? If we work it, it's going to work. Hallelujah. Here in our text, it says it will. Yeah. We shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. If we don't give up and quit. Friends, if we don't get too discouraged and give up, it's going to work. Hallelujah. It's going to work. Hallelujah. I love the story of George Mueller. George Mueller was a man of God in the uh, I believe in the 1800s, he had, you know, he believed God for you know, a lot of money to raise 2,000 children in, in different orphanages. But he prayed for someone for 60 years, and uh, for 60 some years anyway, for someone's salvation. He stated, well, how, you know, how can it be otherwise? As they lowered his body to the ground after he died, that person accepted Christ praying for someone for 60 years and not giving up. How shall it be otherwise? You know, every farmer knows that when they, they plant seed in the spring, 
in the fall it's going to it's going to harvest they know it's going to work they don't see anything uh for a couple months a couple weeks couple months but they know it's going to work friends just like a farmer continues to to plow and plant and all that we as christians need to work in the harvest field because it's going to work hallelujah it is too soon to give up friends as it <laughs> It is too soon for you and I to give up in doing the work of God. Friends, we are going to reap. We will see God break through and move if we will faint not, if we don't give up. Some people just give up just at the, they, they give up just right before the, the, the victory comes. Don't give up before the victory comes. Hallelujah. I love the, the last point. It says, don't give up because it will be worth it all. Hallelujah. It will be worth it all in the end. The Bible says that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared to the glories of heaven. The words of an old song, we've sung it for years in the church that I pastor. You know, here, here, here it is. Oft times the day seems long. Our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear, appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Friends, I understand that life is hard. I understand that life is not always easy. I understand that life is not always fair. There's pressure in this life. There's, there's stress in this life. There's trials in their life. There's storms in our life, etc., but friends, it's too soon to give up. It is too soon to give up. The ministry, as a pastor, I'm telling you, the ministry is not always easy. Teaching Sunday school is not always easy. But anytime you work with people, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. Hallelujah. It's worth it. Hallelujah. But friends, according to the Bible, it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus. Just think about that, my friends. We get to see Jesus one day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I encourage you to keep pressing on in the journey that you're on. I don't know the journey that you're on. I don't know the difficulties, but it's too soon to give up. I encourage you to give up, uh, to keep going on. God's going to reward your faithfulness. God is going to reward your faithfulness. Friends, I, I believe God wants to, wanted me to share this message this with, with you this morning, today. But also, I'm here to let you know that if you're, if you're listening this, you know, today and watching me, and if you're not saved, you know, the only place that you're going to go to is, is a place called hell, and it's not a fun place. You, would, you do not want to go there. So let me tell you that there's, five, there's only five things a person needs to know today. Number one, in, in order to go to heaven, there's only five things a person needs to to know number one you need to know that you're that that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of god every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory number two we have to understand that the wages of our sin is death and that word death in romans 6 23 is not talking not talking about a physical death talking about a spiritual death the bible teaches that there's a spiritual body and a physical body yeah, we're, you're looking at my, and that my natural body, my physical body, but you can't see my spiritual body. I can't see yours either. 
but it's the spiritual body that lives in heaven or in hell, depending what, on what you and I do with the Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing that we need to know is that God loves us so much the Bible, that he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and mine. The Bible says, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Think about that. Read that verse over in Romans 5, 8. It's a powerful verse of scripture. Number four, we have to go back to Romans 6. And when it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. It's a free gift, friends. You know, see, God is absolutely fair. If, it's, if it would be by, if it would be, if it would be by work, you could, maybe possibly you could even work harder or smarter than I could. That wouldn't be fair. If it would be by finances that you can buy your way into heaven, that wouldn't be fair either because some people have more money than you and I have. No, see, God made it absolutely fair. It's a free gift. for the. It, it is the gift of God. And what do you do with a gift? Number five, you have to receive it. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is just call on, on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. That means, you know, that, that word shall be, that's one of the strongest words in the English language. Shall be saved. A friend of mine told me that, that you know, Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that's your part, my part, shall be saved, that's God's part. Let's pray, friends, and if you pray with me, God has promised to come into your life. Think about that. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you keep your word, God's gonna keep his word. If you call upon the name of the Lord today, God will, call, God will come into your heart. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, just pray it with me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. I turn from my sin and I turn toward you. I receive you now. I invite you to come into my heart. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for cleansing me. Help me to be the best Christian I can possibly be. And Father, I pray today that for those who, who have prayed that prayer with me, that you will wrap your arms of love around them and let them know that you love them and that you have entered into their hearts. God, thank you that we don't have to be weary in the journey of life. Thank you, God, that you do refresh us at periodically uh, in our life, you do refresh us, God. I thank you, God, so much for the refreshing of the Holy Ghost in our lives. In Jesus' name. Friends, if you have accepted Christ, if you would contact me at Calvary Baptist Church uh, here in Richmond, my email is Pastor Niece, Pastor Niece, N I E S, at yahoo.com. I will, I will continue to be in prayer for you. If you need any prayer, uh, let us know. Once again, we love you and praise God for you. I know that God wants to do something good in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.